Hello, welcome to the introduction to proofs video for number theory on the Euclidean GCD algorithm. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to apply the Euclidean GCD algorithm, and you should be able to find witnesses to Bezu's identity. Our motivation is that in the previous video, we explored the definitions of GCD and LCM. And now, we will see a fast way for computing common factors. Then, this method can be reversed to solve special types of equations like 84x plus 35y equals 7. We'll start out with a proof of uh, the Euclidean algorithm, that it works. And to do that, we need two important lemmas. So the first one is uh, an easy lemma. It says if you have two integers and d divides a and d divides b, then d divides the difference. This is not a surprising result, and you can prove this just by writing down the definitions. There's nothing deep here. The more interesting result is the following. If a, b, and k are integers, and a and b are not both zero, then the GCD of a and b is the same as the GCD of a minus kb times b. This is saying that you can subtract off multiples of b from a and still keep the same GCD. Now, I don't know about you, but the first time I saw this, it didn't really make sense to me. There's a lot of letters. So uh, to understand this, I made myself a table of data to just play around with some things. So here's a table where a is 50, b is 15, and k is 1, 2, and 3. And I use this table to help understand what this lemma is actually saying. So take a moment to fill out this data and see if you believe lemma two. Okay, so in the first row, if we remove one copy of B, that will turn A into 35. And the GCD of A and B for all of these is five. And now the next question is, what's the GCD of A minus KB and B? So what's the GCD of 35 and 15? Well, you can think about it, it's five. Now let's go to the next row. What happens if we remove another copy of B? Well, that will give us 20. What's the GCD of 20 and 15? It's also five. And then finally, if we remove one last copy of B, we end up with five. What's the GCD of five and 15? Again, it's just five. So in all cases, it looks like the GCD is not being changed by subtracting off copies of B. That's great. And this helps, under, helps us to understand what exactly is happening here and what exactly these things are. Now let's see a proof of lemma two. I like this proof because it does something kind of interesting. We're trying to show that the GCDs are equal. So we're trying to show that their greatest common divisors are equal. So what we'll actually do is show that they have the same set of divisors. So we'll show that a and b and a minus k, b and b have the same set of common divisors. Therefore, they'll have the same greatest common divisor, the same greatest common divisor. So let's start out with a divisor of both a and b, and let's show that d also divides a minus k, b and b. This will be a definition and unwinding proof. By definition, there are integers x and y where a equals dx and b equals dy. Now let's compute a minus kb using this. Well, a minus kb is we replace a with dx and we replace b with kd, sorry, dy. So we replace b here with dy. And then we can factor out the, the d. So it's d times something. So then we've written a minus kb is d times an integer. So we've shown that d is a divisor of a minus kb. So that's what we set out to do. We, we showed that if d divided both of these, then it divides both of these. We already know that d divides b, so we don't need to check anything. Now we need to go the other way. If d divides both of these things, then it divides a and b. This converse direction will be an exercise for you. It's not that hard, and it's also just definition unwinding. 
Now that we've proved the important lemmas, we can move on to what the Euclidean algorithm actually does. So the major idea of the Euclidean algorithm is that if you repeatedly apply the division algorithm on quotients, you can find the GCD of two numbers quickly. Now, rather than go through the proof of this, which I don't think is very illustrative, let's go through an example, and the example will mostly show off the proof. So after you've looked at an example, you can go back to the proof and see what's going on. Let's let A be 84 and B be 35. If we apply the division algorithm, we get that 84 is 2 times 35 plus 14. Now, we're going to take 35 and 14, and those will be our new um, things that we're dividing. Now we're going to divide 14 by 35. So we move 35 over here, and we say, how many times does 14 go into it? It's 2 times 14 plus 7. Now we do the same thing. We move 14 down over here, and we divide it by 7. In this case, we get no remainder. So this is the way that the Euclidean algorithm tells us to stop. Okay, well, we just did that a bunch. What does this tell us? The last remainder that we get, notably the 7 is the last remainder, that turns out to be the GCD. So if, you're, if you want to know why this actually works, you can read a proof, um, but the proof mostly comes down to applying the division algorithm over and over. Now we're going to come back to these computations in a moment, but let's see another example of how this works just to get it um, uh, so that we can understand it a little bit better. Here let's start with a equals 1071 and b equals 462. Applying the division algorithm to this gives us a remainder of 147. Now we divide 462 by 147 and get a remainder of 21. Then we divide 147 by 21, get no remainder, which tells us to stop. So what's the GCD of these two numbers? Can you identify it? It's right here, it's 21. Now, the Euclidean algorithm is great because it tells us how to compute GCDs, but there's a second part. It also tells us how to solve equations like this. So let a and b be integers, not both zero. Then you can find two integers x and y that solve this equation. ax plus by is the GCD. Let's look at an example of this. Our example is going to be apply the Euclidean algorithm and then use back substitution. It sounds more complicated than it is. Here was the work that we did for a equals 84 and b equals 35 earlier in these slides. We showed that their GCD was 7, and we did it by applying the Euclidean algorithm. Now let's work backwards. Our goal is to solve this equation. 7 is equal to 35x plus 84y. Now we have one way where 7 shows up in this equation, namely the second one. So if we rearrange things, we can get 7 is equal to 35 minus 2 times 14. That's good for us. But what we really want is some collection of 35s plus some collection of 84s. This part's a 35, so we'll keep it. But now we want to replace the 14 by some combination of 35s and 84s. So we go back to our work and we see, oh, here's a 14 on its own. We can write it as 84 minus 2 times 35. So by using the first equation, we isolate for 14 and replace it by some combination of 84s and 35s. Now this looks kind of awful, but if we expand it out, we have this. And now if we group the 35s together, we end up with exactly what we want. So a pair of integers that solve the equation is x equals 5 and y equals minus 1. The major idea here is that we, we want to write 7 as a collection of 35s and 84s. Anytime we don't have a 35 or an, or an 84, we replace them using these equations. This seems easier than it is, 
Um, you should try it on your own and get stuck a bunch and try it over and over until it makes sense what you're actually substituting. I think oftentimes people are tempted to substitute the twos here, but there's no way to do that. Now let's look at one last example. Can you solve this equation, 21 is equal to 35x plus 84y? Well, yeah, because we could solve the other one, which was 7 is equal to 35x plus 84y. So because we can solve this easier one, multiply everything through by 3, and you get a solution to the more complicated one. So this tells you that if you can solve something, you can solve something more complicated. Let's take a moment to reflect. What is a proof that the Euclidean algorithm always works? We didn't talk about it, so how, well, how do we know that it actually works? Are the solutions x and y to Bayes' identity always unique? Can there be other solutions? Write code that runs the Euclidean algorithm. Is it fast? Apply the Euclidean algorithm to two consecutive Fibonacci numbers, for example, 55 and 34. What happens and why? Thank you very much, and have a great day.